Medical emergencies. We're gonna start with syncope. Um, what is the cause of syncope? Is it too much blood to the brain or too little blood to, blood to the brain? It is too little. Um, what part of your nervous system it is the symp symptomatic? Um, and that is when your blood vessels um, are dilated. The most common cause of syncope is um, anxiety, stress. What are early signs? It is a um, like cold sweats, pale face, loss of color to the face. Um, what initially happens to the blood pressure? Um, for a patient who is scared, it elevates and then it um, remains low, constant. Once your patient has fainted, they become unconscious. What will the blood pressure do? What will happen to their blood pressure, pulse, and respiration? It will stay that constant low. Um, it is, is it possible for the patient who has fainted to go into convulsions? Yes. What is the first thing you do when your patient faints? Call code blue. What are four things that you should send one of your classmates to get during an emergency? It is the um, emergency kit, oxygen tank, um, the clipboard, and the AED. Um, what position should you put your patient in who had fainted and why? Um, the Trendelenburg, um, lay them flat, um, make sure they don't, um, they're out of the way of anything so they can't um, harm themselves any further. Um, which patient has faded, should not place in Trendelenburg as a pregnant patient. Um, how often should you take the blood pressure, pulse, respirations during emergency? Every five minutes. Uh, why would you wave an ammonium capsule under the patient's nose when faded? Because the ammonium um, helps the um, muscle stimulation come back. Um, when you give oxygen to a patient who's faded, um, yes, you should do that. How much oxygen should you give? It is five to six milliliters, um, liters um, of 100% oxygen. Where should you document everything that is in the um, emergency clipboard? When your patient is having an emergency, where you should remain during the emergency situation is resolved, that is by the patient's side. Um, what is the number thing you can do to prevent emergency? That is um, good medical history. How's that for you? Airway obstruction. What is a flap of tissue that prevents foreign objects from entering the larynx, and that is the esophagus? Can you, how do you distinguish partial airway obstruction and complete airway obstruction? Um, partial, they can wheeze, there's air, some partial air going through, complete, they're not. Um, if the patient is deprived of oxygen for four to six minutes, what is likely to occur? Um, brain damage. What are some symptoms of complete airway? Um, can't breathe, loss of um, color, um, panicking, um, pupils or their eyes get like really red. Um, can a patient lose consciousness as a result of an airway obstruction? Yes, they can. An airway obstruction <clears throat> should occur on your patient. What's the first thing you do? Call code blue. The four things you send for a nearby classmate to get um, are the AED, the oxygen tank, the uh, medical um, clipboard, and then the emergency kit. If your patient has an airway obstruction and still can cough, should you try to harm look? Um, no, because it's it's coughing. They're coughing it up. It's it's a process. They're doing it good. That's good. When you first place, where do you place your fist in the Heimlich procedure on a non-pregnant patient who is conscious? It is in between the navel and the cyboid. Um, right here, put your fist over your other fist. Do that. If your patient moves consciousness while well, Heimlich procedure, what should you do first? Um, lay the patient down and start CPR. Um, which patient had... Which patient has phase that should not be placed in Trendelenburg position, um, a pregnant patient? How often should you take blood post respirations um, during emergency? Every five minutes. Um, why would you leave an ammonium capsule under... Just kidding. <laughs> um, you do finger swim to a constant conscious patient um, that is treated for airway obstruction. If it is visible and you know you can get it, if it has come all the way up but not completely up out of the back of the throat. Um, describe the Heimlich procedure with a conscious, conscious non-pregnant patient. Um, you stand behind them, you put your fist in, um, one fist, hand over, in between the um, navel and the cyboid. You push um, in and up and then just continue to do that. Describe the patient 
the procedure for treating an unconscious, a non-patient um, with a complete airway obstruction, you do CPR, um, that's 30 chest compressions and two breaths. But describe the procedure of treating a conscious patient who has a complete airway obstruction, um, the, the Heimlich, but you would do it above the cyphoid, um, so you don't go anywhere near the baby and hurt the baby. Describe the treatment for a non-conscious patient, pregnant patient um, with a complete airway block. Um, that would be the um, the CPR. Um, but you would just make sure when you do your chest compressions, you, you do it in the proper position so you don't hurt the baby, harm the baby. Um, where you document everything, and that is in the medical records or the records of emergency, and then there are patient notes. If you have patient notes of emergency, where she'd remain until the emergency situation is completely resolved, that is next to the patient. What is the number one thing you can do to prevent an emergency? Take great medical history. All right, hyperventilation. Do your respirations increase or decrease when a patient is hyperventilating? They increase. Um, which patient is most, li most likely to hyperventilate? A child or an adult? It is an adult. Um, what stimulates a breathing reflex of a normal patient? Um, that is the uh, lack of CO2. A uh, patient begins um, hyperventilating. They are exhaling large amounts of what? That is CO2. Um, if not treated, what will happen to the patient who is hyperventilating? They will um, faint, go unconscious. The patient is hyperventilating, what becomes low? Um, their blood oxygen level or their blood carbon dioxide level? As their blood di carbon dioxide level. Um, what causes this patient to hyperventilate? It is um, stress, anxiety. Um, what are some symptoms, signs and symptoms? It is um, deep, fast breathing, um, wheezing. Um, just all anxiousness. What are four things that you should send your classmate to do during emergency to get? Um, that is the AED, the emergency kit, the oxygen tank, and the um, I say emergency, kit, emergency clipboard. What positions did you place um, your patient who is hyperventilating and why? That is just sitting up and down because it opens your airways up completely. Um, How much oxygen are you giving your patient who is hyperventilating? Um, you don't give them any oxygen. Um, they don't need oxygen, they need CO2. How often should you take um, pulse, blood pressure, and respirations during an emergency? Every five minutes. What drug could you give your patient to prevent hyperventilating? That is um, Valium. Um, what would you instruct your patient to breathe how would you instruct your patient to breathe when hyperventilating? Either a paper bag, um, four to 10 breaths per minute, or in their hands if you don't have a bag to help um, contain the CO2 so you can get back into their system to slow it down. What is the normal dose of Valium is given to help um, nervous apprehensive patients who overcome fear of the dentist? It is, it'll be 10 milligrams per, per, you do it like one hour before you get to the dentist and you have to have them um, have a driver and use your license, make sure that they do beforehand and all of that so it kicks in by the time they get there. And once you document everything that happens during an emergency that is in your um, your emergency records of emergency patients and the notes. If your patient is having an emergency, where should you say remain during the emergency situation? That is by their side and was the number thing you can do to prevent emergency and that is to take good notes to health histories. Asthma. Asthma is caused, does asthma cause the um, bronchial of the lungs to um, dilate or constrict? It's constrict. Does asthma increase or decrease the mucus production with the bronchioles of the lungs? It is increased. What are some allergens that can stimulate an asthma attack? Um, there's like for dental, it'd be like latex and other um, allergies like that. For regular, it'd be like pollen, um, dust, um, animal dandruff, food, and such like that. Uh, can stress of the dental office cause asthma attack? Yes. What effects does an asthma attack have on blood pressure? And that is to increase. What are common drug names used to treat asthmatic attack? That is a brood roll. What does an asthmatic typically have more trouble inhaling or exhaling, that is inhaling. What is the first thing you should do when your patient's having an asthma attack? It's called cold blue. What are four things you should send your classmates to get? That is the AED, the oxygen tank, 
the emergency kit and then the um, medical emergency clipboard. Um, what is position? Should you have your patient um, who's having an asthmatic attack be placed and why? And that is just straight up and down, um, like hyperventilating. So every all the lung is open. There's nothing kind of like um, constricting them from breathing. Um, may you give oxygen to a patient who is having an asthmatic attack? Um, yes, and how much CO2 should you give? It is five to six liters of 100% oxygen. What should you, how often should you take pulse, blood pressure, respirations, or an emergency? Every five minutes. If your patient indicates history of asthmatic, of asthma, what questions should you ask them? Um, when's the last time you've had an asthmatic attack? Um, did you bring your inhaler with you? And then what triggers it? Uh, can exercise stimulate an asthmatic attack? Yes. What are some common symptoms of a patient who is having an asthmatic attack? Um, they start um, sweating. They can't breathe. They like wheezy type feeling. Um, and they start pan getting a little bit panicky. Um, where should you document everything that occurs during an emergency? And that is in the medical clipboard and in the patient notes. Um, if your patient's having an emergency, where do you remain until the emergency situation is completely resolved? That is next to the patient. What is the number one thing you could do to prevent an emergency? And that is to take good health history.